Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on cervical length measurement and the meaning of the findings and its management. There are four methods for assessing the uterine cervix, which are digital examination, transabdominal ultrasound, transvaginal ultrasound, and transperineal approach. The digital examination is the most comprehensive in assessing the dilatation, the consistency, the position and length of cervix. However, it is subjective, and it has limitations in evaluating the changes at the level of the internal OS. Overall, transvaginal ultrasound is the preferred modality in assessing cervical length. How do we perform a transvaginal ultrasound? First, the woman must empty her bladder before the procedure. The woman is placed in dorsal lithotomy position. The ultrasound probe is introduced into the vagina and directed towards the anterior fornix. The pressure from the probe on the cervix should be as little as possible, as undue pressure may artificially increase the cervical length, and obscure the appearance of funneling. A sagittal view of the cervix is obtained. Care is taken to identify the external and internal OS and cervical canal. The calipers are placed at the external and internal OS. Each examination should be performed over 2 to 3 minutes. The cervical length may change during uterine contraction or change in woman's position. Three measurements should be obtained, and the shortest measurement should be used. Funneling, placenta previa or low-lying placenta, and vasa previa should be checked and recorded. These are pictures showing the cervical length seen on a transvaginal ultrasound. First picture shows the labeling, the amniotic fluid, fetal head, internal OS, external OS, and the vagina. For cervical length, we measure the distance between the internal and external OS. Next these pictures show funneling seen on transvaginal ultrasound. First picture shows amniotic fluid causing a V-shaped funnel. Second picture shows U-shaped funnel. So the question is, how is cervical length measurement useful in managing a woman? First, it can be used to predict the possibility of delivery within the next seven days in women with preterm contractions above 30 weeks. The cutoff value is 15 mm for singleton pregnancies and 25 mm for twin pregnancies. If cervical length is more than 15 mm in a singleton pregnancy, the risk of delivery in next 7 days is 2%. Second, to predict the likelihood of preterm birth in asymptomatic women with a history of preterm birth or mid-trimester loss. The cutoff value is 25 mm in asymptomatic women between 16 to 24 weeks. Offer prophylactic vaginal progesterone to women without a history of previous preterm birth or mid-trimester loss. Consider prophylactic cerclage for women who have had one or more spontaneous preterm birth or mid-trimester loss. Third, who should be offered cervical surveillance? Women with history of spontaneous mid-trimester loss between 16 to 24 weeks or preterm births. It should be performed fortnightly between 16 to 24 weeks. In women with cervical shortening before 24 weeks, vaginal progesterone or cervical cerclage may be offered after assessment by specialist. This is a simplified chart to show the management. For shortened cervical length less than 25 mm, we consider giving vaginal progesterone as prophylaxis. Whereas for very shortened cervical length, less than 10 to 15 mm, if there is failure of progesterone in previous pregnancy, or progressive shortening despite progesterone in current pregnancy, consider cervical cerclage to prevent preterm delivery. That's all for this video. Thank you.